Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Day 9 Daily number 352, part 3, where we're looking at timing attacks. We've been looking at a fellow named Redbone and his many timing attack travails and what he's doing. Um, and in that last game, in that last game, again, he noticed that, like the big problems that he wanted to address were things like, I didn't block my ramp with zealots, the zerglings got in, rrr, adjustment, maybe I should not take as fast a second gas. Good, that's something that we, we liked quite a bit. Um, and one thing that, again, I wasn't seeing in this analysis that we can look right here. Look at all these adjustments. Make second zealot instead of first. Not taking fast gas. Reinforces idea of needing to expand earlier. Blah, 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 blah. I need to do all this stuff. None of those were the idea of what do I do after the push finishes, right? Because a lot of times your push will work out meh-ishly correct. And you want to have some way to just have a strong follow-up. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and hop into the final game where we're just going to take a look at all these adjustments that Redbone made and see how things end up panning out. So here we have Redbone spawning in the left position. And you're noticing that kind of the way that we've been looking through these games is we start from the top and we're zooming in more and more and more and more. Big things like what buildings do I get? Zooming in more to things like at the start should I be getting more stalkers or more zealots? And we're going to zoom in even more if we want to say things like, should I be spending two chrono boosts on warp gate or one chrono boost on warp gate? You can zoom in like that, but make sure you always do this before, during, and after and answer how does this work or relate to my attack. So we see intentionally no gas being taken by Redbone. He's building some pylons over here. Chrono boosting out warp gate like crazy, like a crazy fool. And there's the second zealot. Remember this adjustment that he said he was going to make? Where he wanted not to deal with a whole bunch of zerglings? Well, there. There you go. Now it looks like he has actually obeyed his own adjustment. And hey, look at this. He saved gas, which he can now spend on this robotics. So he's actually getting his robotics started right around five minutes. That's very early. And now he's finally following this up with a gas geyser. This is only five games of doing this exact opening. And already we're seeing it just look a lot more smooth. He's spending all his chrono boost onto that warp gate research. So he's going to get it at a very fast six minutes. Saved up oodles and oodles and oodles of it. Uh, gets an immortal out but accidentally supply blocks himself, which is a little bit bad. I know it's a lot bad at Grandmaster, but at the level Redbone's playing it, that, the fact that it was supply blocked for a little bit is not going to make me, me puke in my seat or anything along those lines. So again, 7 minutes and 30 seconds is when we expanded that one time, and it looks like we are going to do the exact same timing. Oh, how great! And everything's lining up quite nicely. One thing that I would still note is, look at how much gas we have. This is zooming in a little bit more. Do we really need this one assimilator right now? Maybe we can just go one gas and go three gate robo and just do something like this. Maybe that's, maybe that's actually better. Maybe we should do this and we should somehow get some uh, sentries up or something like that. Hilariously, we're going to see Zerg step in and do literally nothing. Literally absolutely nothing except lose some Zerglings. It's great. We have the Stalker getting warped in. Yeah, you know, these sentries are not really coming. Our gateways are not really getting used, and that's okay. That is not exactly what Redbone said that he wanted to do. Um, but I, if I were him, an adjustment I would make is just not building this second gateway. Just going two gate, robo, expo. Yeah. And there it goes down a pylon. All's looking so good and well in the world. And these two gateways are actually getting started quite a bit earlier than they were in the previous games. And our, pro, our, our uh, Zergy buddy is doing something I think is pretty typical, getting a really fast layer, getting uh, fast roaches, going to be getting an eventual third, right? Everything looks pretty typical from the Zerg's point of view. But we actually have a really nice probe transfer timing. And one thing I was delighted to see is that Redbone is not lifting up on his probe production. That's one of the last things I wanted to mention as we're going through all this analysis. It's incredibly easy to focus on these buildings, 
right? It's incredibly easy to focus on the gateways warping in stalkers. Oh my god, the gateways warp, or the, the robotics warping in immortals. But the most important thing is to not stop making probes. That really is the most important thing, and this will completely botch your build if you don't continuously make workers. You'll have a much weakened play. So Redbone, interestingly, is a little bit behind on this Immortal production when compared to that brilliant Game 2 that we looked at, where he actually had four Immortals out. He had four freaking Immortals out by 11 minutes. But this is still a comparably sized timing push. And I want to focus a lot on the after, because this early part has been so good. Oh no, after we start doing the push, we're not making probes. Oh no, oh no. In the middle of the push, things are looking good, but we're not macroing, we're not making this robotics facility. Your attention, I bet you dollars to donuts, well, now that I see that warping, I know he's looking up there, but I bet you that if I go to the Redbone cam, yeah, he's almost certainly looking at the battle. This is his camera right now, grabbing all this stuff, moving the pylon up, chrono boosting. All right, cool, going back to the battle. Nothing's actually being done here. Did you see that? Let me actually hit back to like uh, 10 minutes. You're actually going to see that he's not clicking with his units, really. He's just sort of staring at him. Don't stare. That's going to eat into your after. And is this after good, right? Is, is going for this 5 gate push good? Well, yeah, it actually seems quite good because then I can go for some Colossi. Here comes the probe towards the middle. Completely halting probe production. There's our warping. Look, just looking at him. Go to here. Look, just looking at the observer. Moving the observer up. Just looking at that battle. Don't look at that battle, Redbone. Don't do that. Grabbing the immortal. Uh, let's look at the battle again. We've literally hit 1A. Is effectively what we've done. We're grabbing the immortal. 1A. Uh, warp in units. Grab them. 1A. Nothing's being micro here. Absolutely nothing. And this is not me saying, LOL, Redbone, you're so bad, don't do that. It's me saying, hey, Redbone, look, you never actually needed to, to pay attention to this battle. You should have been paying attention to other things. Battles want to rip your focus away. It's like having a noisy parrot, right? It's always screaming, look at me! Just ignore the parrot, man. Screw the parrot. And Redbone is not building these extra gas geysers. A huge deficit. And this is where I think 90% of people are going to mess up with timing pushes. This is actually where I think 90% of people are going to mess up. They're going to discover a timing attack um, that kind of works, and they're going to lean on it hard, and then what's going to happen is this. Forgetting assimilators. This, looking around, where is the Colossus tech? Nowhere to be found. And then, the, one day, that timing attack is going to be defended by a really good player. And the good player is going to come back with a counter swing and win. And your gut is going to say, oh, my timing attack doesn't work anymore. And you're going to give it up. This attack by Redbone has shown amazing promise. I don't even have any sentries, but I still think it could be improved a lot by sentries and upgrades. This has some incredible promise to it. However, however, ever, ever, despite all this incredible promise that it may or may not have, um, what was I talking about? Yeah, despite all this incredible promise that it may or may not have, don't give it up if you lose after the timing uh, attack happens, because you can easily build some Colossus, you can easily do all sorts of things, the after is the most important part of any timing push. I actually just realized that I have to go to state of the game now, so we're going to take questions and wrap this sucker up, yeah. Markio's question grabber, and while that's going on, I want to say that there's going to be no Newbie Tuesday for next week, um, because I have a lot of stuff to do over the weekend. It's going to be uh, the Red Bull LAN, woo! It's going to be a training-only LAN down at the Red Bull headquarters that has the likes of Goody, Th um, Bomber, QXC, uh, White Rod, Liquid Tyler, Sake... I don't know why these Protoss players are blanking on me. There's one more. And a bunch of Zergs, right? Destiny, Slush, Sheth, and Rhett. There we go, yes. I'm missing one Protoss, and that's okay. He's never going to come back into my mind ever again. And they're going to be doing trainings, practicing, boot camping before um, IPL3 and MLG Orlando. And uh, I'll be there helping out, doing casting, streaming this weekend. Definitely tune in, definitely tune in Red Bull. 
Um, I think it's Red Bull US. I know it's twitter.com slash Red Bull Gaming is the, is the best place to get the link. Yeah, see, I'll even, I'll even, I'll even show it. I'll even show it. Here we go. Yeah, Red Bull Gaming. There we go. Yeah, yeah. All right. Marquio's question grabber. Uh, let's see here. So Strafe says, Dear Day 9, you have said in previous dailies that lots of people look at the last bad thing that happened and say that's why they lost. You say this is bad because you should focus on the first thing. But today, you said that Red Bull didn't lose because of those Zerglings. Yeah, let's definitely talk about that a little bit. So, for any of you who don't know what Strafe is referring to, uh, there's this problem that a lot of players will have, like um, where at the 10-minute mark, they will completely mess up and they will be dead. Like, completely mess up. Like, lose all their workers. But because they have mules, they can manage to work their way back into the game. And they'll have this epic 30 minute long game and they'll start analyzing what happened from minute 25 to 30 and be like, how do I fix what happened between minute 25 and 30? Ah, uh. And the answer is, well, that attack that killed you at minute 10, just prevent that from happening and you'll never be in this situation ever again. So what about that game that happened to Redbone where he popped in with all the Zerglings and did a whole bunch of damage? So obviously, yes. You should clog that up with Zerglings, or excuse me, clog your entrance up with Zealots, rearrange your building placement so that never happens again so you never have to worry about it, right? That is absolutely correct, and that is where he should look for to fix in terms of looking at the first thing. However, there's a difference between going to the first thing and the real reason why you lost. Amazingly, in that game, what I was trying to point out is that it felt as though Redbone had lost. It felt as all those Zerglings had come in and he got flustered. He actually was not behind, though. He was actually quite even because the number of Zerglings that that Zerg lost was so huge that Zerg had boned his own economy, right? Zerg was self-killing. So in that game, the real reason that our Protoss player lost is that after he held on to that early game and after he was even, then he stopped making probes and didn't focus on the after of his timing push, didn't really get good Colossus tech up. Oh yeah, what's the funny money for next week? Team Mana Battles. Play 3v3 or 4v4, where you publicly announce the one unit you will be making all game long, and then you may only make that unit for the rest of the game. Yeah, observers don't count. Uh, and you can make, like, one overseer or something like that. So the Giant Gnome says, Dear Day 9, how would you try this uh, attack timing fanciness as a Zerg player? Same thing. You just say to yourself something like, I am going to do a huge timing push at 10 minutes with Burrow Roaches and Zerglings, and that's just what I'm going to do. Or I'm going to do a huge mass drop and harass Zerglings at his front right at the 10 minute mark. That's just what I'm going to do. Um, and you start making adjustments based around it. And let's say you don't want to do the timing attack thing. Let's say you want to do harassment. Let's say you're saying, okay, at 10 minutes, I'm going to start harassing him a lot with small drops and mutilisks. That is what I want to do, and I'm forcing myself to start doing it at 10 minutes. Then you still have the same thing. Am I executing this attack properly? Do I have a good setup for after uh, the attack happens? And am I doing everything before the attack happens to make it as good as possible? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so here's a question from MMM for the win. Dear Day 9, what would a Terran 10 to 12 minute push consist of? Whatever the hell you want. That's the whole point of this daily, is that you really need to just give in to what you want to do and just try to see it to make it work. And you can take inspiration from someone else, but you should just try to start making yourself do stuff. And you don't necessarily have to say 10 to 12 minutes. You can say, when I have three immortals, I will push. When I finish my first two medevacs, then I'll push. When my stim is done, then I will push. You have some reason to push, and you just do it. No matter how stupid it seems, make yourself start doing pushes. Very common thing, for instance, for Terran players to do. They will get um, stim and combat shield off one tech lab. When stim's done, try to push. And then when combat shield's done, try to push. And then... When your 1-1 upgrades are done from your engineering bay, try to push a third time. Just tell yourself, I'm going to do it here. And I guarantee you all those Terran players out there will be amazed to find that that actually works a hell of a lot. Hmm. It's really, really, really good. Uh, I'm going to take one more question, and then I have to go do State of the Game. Yeah. 
So Anton Trong says, Dear Day 9, you mentioned that micro wasn't necessary in the battle and macro was the priority. What level does it become important to manage that battle? Um, I, I don't want to say ignore all micro, period. What I want to try to get you in the habit of is looking at it last. That's it. You can look at the after part and be like, all right, well, that's all good. And look at the before part and be like, that's all good. All right, let's, as my last step, look at the battle. Oh, you know what? If I just microed a little more here and here, I could easily won. That is the change I'm going to make. That's totally fine, but I want that to be the last thing. Because StarCraft is all about resources and um, how you spend them and how you arrange it. And it's all about the timeline of when you're building things. So if you try to do something like micro way too hard, um, you're ignoring all the important parts of the game. I'm going to go. I uh, have state of the game now. Tune in. Go to teamliquid.net. It's in the top right corner. Also, the GeForce SC2 Pro-Am Grand Finals are on Thursday at 6 p.m. Go to GeForce.com. Check it out. Me and Husky is casting. I'll miss you until then. And I'll see you tomorrow with some more stuff. That's right, guys. Macro hard, Microsoft. Cheers.